Yeah, Maria, you published a book in 2018 titled Self-Care Affirmation Journal, 52 Self-Care Affirmations to Reconnect with Yourself and Develop a Healthy Mindset. Yeah. So it, it kind of ties into, we're, we're just talking about parents maybe feeling burnt out from juggling too many things on their plate. Um, and self-care is important, you know, for mm-hmm. all parents of children, especially those with special needs. So how do stress and burnout impact the Black community differently? Oh, wow. This is uh, a great question when I love to get. It impacts us differently because as a community, we are not allowed to um, be tired. We're not We're not allowed that. We're not afforded that. We, we're not given the grace. We're constantly told, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and work through it, push through it. You know, there's the strong Black woman, you know, that we have to be all the time. Um, you know, we have to continue to move forward regardless of what's happening. And of course, we know that um, we may be under a lot of stress <laughs> uh, because one, being Black in America is just difficult in itself um, and navigating that. And then all of the other things and stresses that we may be dealing with. So of course, uh, burnout and uh, stress are impacting us at a, a different level, at a greater level, because we constantly are not afforded that grace to be able to deal with stressors before it gets to the point of burnout. Um, and then when you add in the fact that you may be raising a disabled child um, or you may be a caregiver for somebody else, um, we are constantly trying to push through that and be the best that we can be um, and not allowing our own selves that that grace, of course, you know, and then it leads to medical then issues. Um, which are greatly impacting the the black community. You know, there's hypertension, there's heart, um, cardiac issues. You know, so all of that that we're dealing with, and then we're still pushing ourselves to push through it, um, mm-hmm. rather than asking for help. Because you know, if you ask for help, then you're not a strong black woman. Um, instead of giving us the grace to say no, being a strong black woman is actually asking for help and knowing that um, I don't have to do it all. Mm-hmm. How do you and your husband practice self care? Um, so I am still working on being able to practice what I preach <laughs> a lot of times, but my husband is very helpful with that. He will um, definitely make me get away. Um, so I'm very intentional about my self-care time, and I think it's very important to to be honest about being intentional uh, with it because we know that as parents, um, we don't have a lot of time to ourselves. Add in raising a, a child um, who has a disability, then you know that that time just goes out the window. So I'm intentional with the time that I do get, and I do things that I like to do, whether it be staying up later um, just to have quiet time uh, away from everybody and reading a book or watching one of my favorite reality TV shows. Um, mm-hmm. Taking a nap. Uh, I'm I'm one for putting mommy in timeout. I'm like, you know what? I need a timeout. I tag my husband in, and he <laughs> takes over, um, just to give myself some some time to refill um, mm-hmm. my cup. So you know, it's just being honest about asking for help. You know, I rely on my support system um, to vent to to come and help when I need it. Um, and then I, I do things that I enjoy doing. I know that social media has kind of given us a, a look of how self-care looks, you know, on the beach with a drink. Um, mm-hmm. And while that is great self-care and a form of self-care, the self-care that I promote is mental health self-care. We have to take care of the mental health. We have to set boundaries with people. So I, I have firm boundaries with any anybody who interacts with me um, because that's how I keep my self-care. You know, Noah's complete sentence for me. I'm not going to put more on my plate than I can um, handle. Um, and I don't have to offer you a reason as to why I'm saying no. It's just no and that's it. So understanding that. I'm being careful about who I let into my circle um, because I'm intentional about what I'm cultivating in my home. So those are the type of boundaries that I'm setting uh, to make sure that I'm also implementing that self-care. Yeah, so important. Um, Yeah, especially in this kind of work that you are in with advocacy work, like it it can be draining and it can sometimes, I imagine, feel like 
you know, there's just always so much more to do, so much, so much more to achieve and, and get done. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.